In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to get started working with dynamic content in Brizzy Pro. So the first thing we're going to do is create our first post. Now a post is what we're going to use to fill out the actual templates themselves. This is just a great way of being able to see how all these things link together. Things like the title, the content, the featured image, and so on. So let's just create a very quick post. We'll give this a title. We'll drop in a little bit of content and we'll go ahead and add a featured image. Okay, cool. Once we've done that, we've now set everything that we need. Let's publish this post and let's take a look at how we can actually create the template and include our dynamic content. Okay, so now let's create the design that's going to use the dynamic content from our posts. Okay, so let's start from scratch. So we're going to create our own section. And the first thing we're going to do is pop in the featured image and the title right at the top. A great way of drawing attention to exactly what the article's all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus and that'll open up all our elements on the left hand side. Now you'll notice that we get these additional new elements such as featured image, title, content, posts, and so on. These are unique elements when working with dynamic content inside templates. So we can use these elements to very quickly and easily build up our page using dynamic information. So for example, let's just pull the title in to start off with. We'll drag the element over and you can see there's our sample post for Brizzy, what we just created. Next up, if we want to include the featured image, we can do exactly the same thing. We'll just drag the featured image over, drop that in place, and now our featured image and our title are all set up. Now we can go ahead and start to style these, configure them any way that you want to. At the moment, everything just looks a little bit too big. So let's just tweak that. We'll come up to our section in the top right-hand corner, open up the options, and inside there, we'll open up the cog, and now we can adjust the height, the width, those kinds of things. So let's say we want to set this to something like 80%. We'll set that inside there. That looks a little better. I quite like the look of that. We'll select our image and we can make any adjustments to the image if we want to. So again, we can come into the cog icon and we can adjust the height inside here. So we'll just adjust this and we'll just make it a little bit smaller, maybe something like 60. That looks much better. So it's not so overpowering. Okay, so that's the image and the title pulled in. We can go ahead and repeat this process now for any of the additional pieces of information using these elements. So let's pull the content in and drop that underneath. And there's our content. And finally, we're going to come down and we're going to say we're going to pop in some navigation to allow us easily go through all the different posts we have. And finally, let's go and use the posts widget to give the ability to easily go and choose kind of related posts. So once that's loaded in, we can now make changes to that. So we have lots of control over the various different elements inside you. So let's just choose one of these elements, select this. Now we can make changes to this position settings and so on background colors, all those kinds of things, or we can make it to the entire element itself. We can come in and we can adjust things inside here. So we can see we've got posts, we can adjust the number of posts and so on. The filter, which is where we can go ahead and set this up to show exactly what we want. So you can see we've got source is posts, but you can change this to pages. If you've got something like WooCommerce installed, you'll have things like products and so on. We'll leave this set to posts from now on. And if you want, you've got navigation inside here as well. So you could add pagination and tags, those kinds of things in. And the cool thing is this isn't the only way in which we can create dynamic links and dynamic content. We can do lots of other pretty cool things too. So let's take a look at another method. This time we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna add a text field underneath our image and before our content. And we're gonna use this to kind of drop in some meta information about the author and so on. So what we can do now is we can just select all this text, delete it from there, and now we can start typing directly inside here. So we can say written by, and now we want to drop the author's information in. To do that, we're going to simply use the hash symbol. And once we use that, you can see that pulls up a context sensitive set of options. Inside there, now we've got things like post title, content, excerpt, date, time, so on. Lots of useful pieces of information. So we want, in this example, the author name. So once we select that, you can see that now drops in the little short code for the author's name. Now, when you preview this or you look at this on the live site, that little placeholder will be replaced by the actual information. So just bear that in mind. So now we can repeat that procedure to add extra fields in. So we might want to put the date in. Same again. We use the hash symbol. And now we're just going to say post date. There we go. Repeats it with the short code. So we can keep on using these to build up something really unique, all in context inside our content, which is really cool. Now, if you don't want to use this sort of inline inserting of these short codes, there's another way in which you can use it. Let's remove what we have by here. Keeping the normal text field open, we're gonna click on the typography option, and you'll see that we've got this little database icon. 
If we select that, you can see we now have several of those same fields inside here. Again, custom text, post title, post content, post excerpt, and so on. So using this method, we can simply choose what we want from the list. Again, let's choose something like the post time this time. We'll select that and that will then insert it. This time, the difference is you don't see the placeholder text, you see the actual results. The downside is though, we can't actually click inside here and make changes. This just simply drops in the relevant value. But that's how you to get started with inserting dynamic content into your WordPress pages using Brick.